Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. We're going to try something a little different this time, and we're going to look at repairing an automatic antenna tuner. This is an SGC SG239. This is a tuner that I've had for over 15 years, and it's been a great little tuner. It operates pretty well, and I'm not sure how well you can see it on the video, but uh, the cover if you look at the top of it, it's pretty scuffed up. Bottom's pretty scuffed up. This thing has been thrown into my uh, go kit, taken to field day operations, portable operations, various different kinds of other Boy Scout or emergency service operations, and it's worked really well. About a month ago, I set it up to use it for something, and it would not tune properly. The relays that uh, select the different capacitors were clicking through all the different choices and it would sit there and try to tune for I don't know 20 or 30 seconds whatever the time limit is on it but it would try all the combinations and it would never tune and then it would finally give up and show that it wasn't tuned so that's definitely not normal behavior and, I've, and I used it on an antenna that I know had worked correctly before. And then, in fact, I tried a different tuner, and the other tuner tuned up the antenna fine. So something's gone wrong inside of here, and it may very well be because I've tossed it around and beat it up pretty good over the years, and maybe something's come loose or broken. We'll just have to see. So I thought we'd see if we could repair it instead of sending it out to repair. Let's take a look. First, we'll need to get into the box. The SGC is held together with just two screws, one on each side. So, we'll just get a Phillips screwdriver and take this apart. Then, once we've got the other screw out, the lid should just pull off the top of this. It's just connected together with the top and bottom lid screwed to each other and holding the board in between. Now we can see the circuit board. So we'll take a good look here at this side of the board and then we can spin it around later and take a look at the other side. So I looked pretty thoroughly at all of the components from the one side to see if I could see anything obvious. And then I didn't see anything, and I turned it around, and I was looking from the other side. And then I noticed on the lower left, this one capacitor had a crack in it. So that capacitor is actually connected to the ground output terminal. And if you look at the close-up here, you can see where there's a crack. And you can actually move the little front piece of it. It's actually separated into two pieces. So I'm pretty sure that's the culprit. And it looks like it's probably mechanical damage. I don't see any, you know, signs of charring or anything else. So we'll take this out of the case. And then we can get to the bottom side of the circuit board. And we'll be able to unsolder that cap and put in a new one. It's kind of clever here the way they connect to the ground. It's just a little compression fitting that squeezes against the metal on the lid. This particular cap that failed is a 0 .033 microfarad 630 volt cap, and I didn't happen to have any of those in my junk drawer, so I needed to order something. I found the parts at Mauser Electronics. The caps were pretty cheap, so I ordered 10 of them, along with a few other components just to make it worth the shipping cost of putting in an order. All right, now we need to take out the cap that's on here. So let's get started on that. So I got this pan of ice a number of years ago. And it's very handy for holding circuit boards. And we just need to open it up. But of course, it's not quite big enough for this one. Thankfully, we can still fix that. Sorry, I got 
it's plain rice. No gravy over there. And it's pretty handy for home chicken for you. You just need to open it up. But of course, it's not quite big enough for this one. Hopefully, you can still fix that. And you can do the same with the other side, but I don't need to in this case. There we go. This is a little difficult to maneuver in here, but I will try to let you see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get this to see if we can just pull it out. Get a little bit more solder on the soldering iron to transfer the heat. Probably I should put a bigger tip on because that's a pretty big pad. Finally got it out. And now we can clean those holes out a bit. So, I don't normally advocate something like this, but <clears throat> and that's why I don't advocate something like this, because it's very easy to damage boards. But thankfully there's no other components around here, so, or that are too nearby. So our replacement cap is a little bit physically smaller, but it is the same rating, so it should work fine. So. We've got our leads bent out and the holes cleared out. So that should fit in there just the way we need it. And then I'm going to just bend the leads out a little bit on the bottom. So this doesn't fall out when I flip it over. And we'll just solder this new one in. And again, this pad's going to be stubborn because there's a lot of copper here to heat up. And 
There we go. So I did scorch the board a little bit there, but I don't think any major harm done. So now we'll just put this back together. This is the bottom plate. There is a little notch here that needs to line up with this center conductor here so that it uh, gives it a little bit of clearance because voltages can, RF voltages can be a little high. And then you can see where that little ground piece has captured this. So now I'll put the cover on. Put the screws back in. And now, we'll just go see if it works. So, we've got the tuner put back together here, and I've just got it uh, temporarily connected up to my IC7300. So we've got power. This is the, power, the RF coming in from the radio, and then RF coming out from the radio here. The SGC239 just has terminal strip connections for the RF, and I just made these little handy SO239 connectors so that I can connect up coax to them a little bit more easily. So let's turn the power supply on first and see what happens here. Alright, we came up in auto mode because the indicator light came on, so that's a good sign. And let's bring up the radio. And let's see, we'll We'll try at the hardest band here. Let's go all the way down to 80 meters. Um, and somewhere in the middle here. And I'm already in ready mode. And let me just uh, make sure my power is set to 10% here. So the SGC tuner just needs RF to make it tune. So it's pretty simple to connect to the radio. There's no control connections like with the uh, other tuners. Of course, that means you can't use the tune button, but you just need to give it a little RF and it should tune up. So let's see what happens. And it uh, tuned right up, shows that we're tuned, and actually we can go to the uh, larger screen here and we'll check our SWR. And it looks like we are just about two to one. So this will only tune, well, it'll stop tuning if it gets better than two to one. All right, let's try 40 meters and see what we get there. Let me bring the scope up so we can find a clear spot here. And we're already at 10% power. We'll put it in ready mode so we get a carrier. Make sure that we're clear. And that one tuned up as well. Let's see how it looks on the radio. And, oh, sorry, I was looking at my uh, current before. My SWR is actually one to one. So, my mistake. And then let's try going up to 20 meters and we'll see what we get there. Again, let me just make sure we're clear of anything here. And it seems to be a pretty clear spot. And we'll go to the meter. And we will put the rig in ready mode. And we'll try tuning here. And again, just about to a uh, perfect one-to-one -one match. So, looks like that capacitor did the trick. 
Okay, well now that it seems like it works and we're tuned up, let's uh, see if we can actually make a contact. Uh, 195 seems to be clear. Let's turn the power up. Uh, go to the center display here. QRZ is this frequency in use. Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victor Delta. Hello, is this frequency in use? Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victor Delta. Hello, CQ, 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 calling CQ, calling CQ on 20 meters. This is Whiskey America, number 2, India, Victor Delta. WA2IVD, calling CQ on 20 meters and standing by. This is Whiskey America 2, India, Victor, Delta, calling CQ and standing by. Yeah, I hear a Kilo 1 something, Kilo 1 question mark, uh, Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victor, Delta. Yeah, Kilo 1, Juliet Kilo from Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victor Delta. The name here is Tom, Jeff, and uh, you're, uh, you're just kind of breaking the noise. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm copying you fine that time. You came up a little bit. Uh, you're a 5 and something less than 6 or 7. I can't quite tell. My noise floor here is pretty high. It's actually about S5 or S6, so... Uh, but uh, copied you fine that time. We're just testing out an antenna tuner repair here. I've got an SG239 uh, uh, antenna tuner from SGC, and uh, it kind of petered out on me here a while back, and wouldn't it's uh, stopped tuning correctly. It would just keep hunting and hunting and not find a tune, and I found a broken capacitor in it, and we just repaired it, and we're trying to test it out. Yeah, okay, very good, Jeff. Uh, well, like I said, you're, uh, you're fine copy. I've got no, uh, no other signals interfering or anything, so I'm copying you fine, but uh, uh, not, uh, not real strong here. Very good on the 80 watts. We're, uh, we're just running an NFED um, antenna through the tuner here. It's a 53-foot NFED antenna with an ICOM 7300 and uh, we're just running a hundred watts as well here barefoot all right Jeff very good we will uh, catch you further down the log thank you for the comeback I appreciate it and uh, you have a great afternoon Kilo 1, Juliet Kilo, Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victor Delta will be clear. All right, well, there you have it. It looks like this little couple pieces of capacitor was, in fact, the culprit. The tuner seems to be working okay, in spite of me scorching the backside of the circuit board a little bit, but... Uh, there's a repair done and back in service. So sometimes you can get your equipment back up and running without having to go buy something new or sending it off to the repair center, at least if you find something obvious. I didn't even need a uh, meter or any test equipment at all in this case to find the repair. They're not always that easy, but in this case I was lucky. Well, that's it for this time. I hope you found this useful. If you did enjoy the video or found it useful, if you would click the like button, I would certainly appreciate it. 
If you're finding my channel useful, you can subscribe by clicking on the little icon that will pop up toward the end of the video, or just click on the subscribe button on the channel page. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.